Let's get started with some C++ basics. After this lecture, you should practice writing some C++ code. This is an empty C++ program, the bare minimum you need to get started. The main function is the starting point of your program. Without it, you will get a compile error. The return zero is where the program ends. The zero means that everything finished properly. The return zero is a throwback to an old way of handling errors. Zero means no errors, and then returning any other number would stand for some error code. Ever seen a program give you an error like error code 201 or some random number? It's not helpful, but that's what that is. This program right here does nothing. It will start and then end immediately. We need to add some more stuff. A program isn't much of a program without variables. A variable is a place where you can store data. Numbers, letters, text, memory addresses, and more. In C++, you must declare a variable before you can use it. When you declare it, you must specify the data type and the name, or identifier, for that variable. If you don't initialize the variable with a value, it is initially stored with garbage. Garbage is the term for a value at some memory address. When we create a new variable, we reuse memory addresses that aren't being used anymore. When something stops using memory, it doesn't necessarily clean up its data. It's just easier to leave it. In this program, we have variables numA and numB, but they're never assigned values. numB got the value 0, but numA pulled a value from that memory address, so it is 32767. It's not always going to be this value. It's just what was in that memory address at that time. Having garbage data in your program, by not initializing variables, can create undefined behavior. This means you can't predict what your program will do. By reading the source code here, we have no idea what numA and numB will be set to, so we have no idea how the program will function. If this were a larger program, this could cause a lot of problems. Here are a few ways we can declare a variable. We could just declare a variable and then assign a value to it later. We could assign a value when we declare it. Or we can also declare multiple variables at once. Each variable has a data type and the data type is specified when you declare the variable. The variable can never change its data type. So, what are the data types? Here are some, but not all of the data types that are part of C++. Some of the built-in or primitive types are integers, floats, booleans, and characters. And then the C++ standard library has data types such as strings, input and output streams, and data structures like vectors and lists. That's for later. Integers are whole numbers, no decimal points, no fractions. They can be positive, negative, or zero. A float is a number that can contain a decimal, but it doesn't have to. It can be positive, negative, or zero. A boolean stores true or false. A character stores a single character, such as one letter, one number, a symbol, or a key code. And a string can store virtually any amount of text, letters, numbers, symbols, etc. Now let's talk about outputting information to the screen and getting information from the user via the keyboard. To use the C in or console in and C out or console out commands in C++, we need to first import a library. To use another library, we use in pound include and then the library name. IOStream is for input-output streaming. The cout command is part of the standard library. We prefix cout here with std and two colons, which means standard, to specify the namespace that it comes from. endl stands for end line. We have to manually specify where line breaks are in C++. A namespace is a way to group code together under a common name. If you are using multiple libraries, it is possible that there could be naming collisions, two libraries using the same name for functions or variables. The standard library has its functions in the std namespace. We will learn more about namespaces later. Just remember that functionality from IOStream and other libraries we will use are in the standard namespace or std namespace. Though we can get rid of the std prefix by adding using namespace std to the beginning of our program outside of main. The two less than signs after the cout is a stream operator. 
Remember that, for console output, the stream operator points towards the output. We can keep linking string literals, variables, and inlines together with the stream operator. Here are some ways we can output data to the console. You can output just a string literal by itself, or you could put a string with a variable after it, and then the variable's value will appear after. Or you can keep stringing them together and even put them on other lines. To get input from the user, we can use CN or console in. The stream operator signs after CN will point towards the variable and away from the CN. We can use CN with integers, floats, characters, strings, and other data types. To remember the directions of the stream operators, remember that the text is flowing towards the console out, while the input is flowing from the console input towards the variable. Okay, now that we've covered input and output, let's talk a little bit about the string data type some more. The string data type requires that we include another library from the standard library, so we'll include the string library. A string is a string of characters, text, letters, numbers, anything. We can also use cn to get a string from the user, but using cn in this way only allows us to get any text up to a blank space. Anything after the space may be passed to the next CN statement if you have one. Now let's go over types of errors before we start programming. There are various types of errors that you can experience when programming. Let's go over these so that you can learn to look out for these problems. A syntax error is when something in the language has been incorrectly typed. The compiler can easily detect these errors, and you will receive a compile time error if this happens. In this example, I've misspelled int, and it's giving me an error, saying that it doesn't know what an int g type is. A runtime error is not something that is grammatically incorrect in your program, but something breaks or doesn't work as intended while the program is running. A logic error is an error that doesn't break the program, but doesn't work as intended. It is an error in logic. It could simply be getting a formula wrong. The formula for the area of a rectangle is the width times the height, but here we've coded it as the width plus height. When you run the program, you can tell something's wrong, but then you have to go track it down in your code. The syntax error is easiest to find, since your program won't be able to build unless your syntax is correct. And it might not be too difficult to spot a runtime error, since your program may crash when you encounter one, but then you have to track down where it crashed and why. But logic errors are the hardest to diagnose, since the program will operate as written. The computer won't fact-check your formulas and algorithms for you. So now let's put it all together.
Okay, that was a pretty terrible Mad Lib, but you get the picture. Why don't you try to write your own Mad Lib to practice some of the programming concepts?